I'm Jason Goliath. And I'm Nicholas Goliath. And this is a new podcast called The Happiness Economy, where we try and unpack, figure out, investigate, interrogate, I think holistically understand what is happiness even. What is it to you? What is it to me? Is it different? Is it the same? What do you do to chase your happiness? Just chase it. We want to chat to people who we believe have found their happiness or are on the way to finding their happiness and find out what it is that makes them happy. So, if you're happy, we're happy. The Happiness Economy with Nicholas and Jason Goliath. Tell what you must. So, ladies and gents, today on The Happiness Economy, we have the amazing... Candace Chirwa, aka the buh, Minister buh, of Menstruation, buh, educating buh, men buh. through pain every day. Period. With a smile on her face. <laughs> Full stop. Period. 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 This is my deputy spokesperson. Yes. 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 I'm the through deputy's deputy. Education. But through pain gives very sexual though. No, no you made let's, it very sexual. Let us give, <laughs> I'm just saying, no, the way you say it, educates men, men through pain. Through pain. Let us, so, about so this. Mam yeah. Chirua does this amazing thing. And if you don't already follow, go and follow uh, the Minister yeah. of Menstruation. Yeah. And essentially what it is, is we've, and I've, I've, I did a show called Menstruation, Surviving a Wife. Mm, let's talk where, about that. Where, where, mm. where mm. lots of women came at me and said, this is uh, e- emotional. Uh, uh, um, Gaslighting? But no, no, no. What do they call it? Appropriation. Oh, I'm gonna just which is what I loved, actually. They were like, this is, this is emotional, appro- experiential appropriation. Hey, boy. Hi, this and, is a new term. And, and I, I named it that literally just as clickbait for, for to get up. You know, because nowadays nobody feels anything. So I, I put it as clickbait and it gave me so much joy, honestly, mm. that every woman who came at me for the name of the show, mm. instead of replying in an emotional way, I could say, I properly understand why this upsets you. Mm. But if you could do me a kindness... Come and watch the show, sure. and then let's talk about your opinion on the name mm. after you've consumed the content. And I got so many DMs from women who then went quiet after that response of mine, mm. and then came to the show and then said, "I actually want to say sorry." Yes. And the reason they said sorry is because the show was me as a husband being trying at my best to be an ally yes. and calling out men. Who you know what will happen with me? Nicholas arrives at work in a bad mood. I say, "Ah, oh, you on your period, boss." Yes. You know what I mean. Nicholas does something. I say, "Oh, watch your tampon fell out there." The most insensitive, ignorant shit, and that's sure. what men. That's Thank what you. men do. And I was just like, when I now say, "Guys, I'm menstruating," mm. what that means is I am currently supporting my wife who is currently menstruating mm. and her body is trying to kill her her body is doing things to her that she can't control um, and all i'm trying to do is is uh, be as supportive as i can right. uh, in the moment then we get invited onto this podcast here the minister's podcast where she's imported a machine that replicates period pain yeah. Nicholas and I have both been on this thing. You may have seen one or two on my socials. Somebody's ex lost the footage. So we don't have the footage, but we have enough clips of us yeah. being plugged in. Nick, what did having a period feel like to you? And don't lie because we. Straight up. We, Look, we can rewind. We no, we can rewind. I did play the clip. comedy. I was on stage with that thing plugged in. Never mind even just the podcast and yeah. sitting in the chair and yeah. doing the thing. Because the, the point was to experience it in the real world, doing right. your job, because that's yeah. what women have to yeah. do, is go and do their yeah. jobs, even when. Um, and then I had to do my job on stage with with the pads. Yo, 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 yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were yeah. sweating. I All I want to say is that thing, gave me, that thing gave me a new respect because I know that it's as painful as it was, mm. I know that it's not the pain that you go through. I know that it's not... The same. I'll yeah. never be able yeah. to experience yes. exactly the same. Example. Thing. So just to to have that little bit of experience um, has changed my whole perspective on on how women deal with their people. How, how you don't swear us more. Yeah. How you don't swear us more? Because I wanted to, and in fact, I think when during that show I did, I swore at everybody yeah, in that audience. Mm-hmm. It literally poop, 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 poop. I don't want to swear here now because it's not. But I was fluking. And angry, and and I also like Nick realized that this is a sample of the pain, mm. and this was only the physicality. This is not dealing with what the. Whole
Guys, I don't even use my period tracker anymore. <laughs> I know it's about to happen when his breathing irritates me. Yes. When his breathing irritates mm-hmm. me, then I know, okay, it's 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 coming. Mm. And I was like, oh, I can I can relate to that. That's mm. not an uh, 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 you're not choosing to do that. Mm. Uh, that's an automated an automated response to what your body's doing. But sure. we're not here to discuss that pain. Mm. We're here to discuss the moments in between, the okay. joy, the joy, the joy in between. Okay. So the happiness economy. Every guest here is somebody who we assume is happy based on whatever our interactions may have been, whatever we've seen of from them on social media. Mm. We had to interrogate, are you happy and what you feel about it? Wow. Or are you Goliath? just happy when you are torturing yes, men? Yes, 100%. With, when you're with making your men bad. cry. No, because we see that smile. No, no, no. no. This Guys, is, these are facts. Don't, you <laughs> don't listen. You, you enjoyed torturing us. <laughs> yes. I've never you seen a grin like that. No, you had fun with that. Look, you smile. That's a grin. Yeah. <laughs> you're wondering <laughs> what it looks like. Grin. That's, That's the grin. That's yeah. the same grin, yeah. While you're wincing in pain, because you can't, you don't know, what? Oh, it's so oh, incredible. Like, you guys are having these out-of-body, co- and I'm just oh. saying, like, no. we it's go through this every You time. guys. All the time. I can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't explain it other than, you know those, those, those uh, spheres with the electricity inside, then you put your fingers on it, and the electricity, yes. mm-hmm. it feels like your body is one of those. Like, yeah. you have an electricity generator that comes from your pupil, mm. joins with the balls, mm. and then comes up into... Because I have a uterus now. Since wearing yes. those things, <laughs> I have a uterus. That's what it feels like. And you like. can speak on behalf of us now. You? Uh-uh. 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 You? <laughs> no, no, anyway. no. No, we will not be speaking on behalf the, of anybody. The, the, our Goliath Happiness Index yeah. is made up of three <laughs> words, which we also try to get to the bottom of and, mm. and also try to encourage people to use GAP uh, as, mm. a, as, a, as, a, as a lifestyle. Okay. So can you identify the GAP? Can you fill the GAP? And GAP is gratitude, acceptance, and perspective. Wow. So that's all we're here to talk about today. Mm. Gratitude, acceptance, perspective. Can you exist as much as you can in the space of gratitude? Mm. Have you accepted who you are, why you are, what you are? Mm. And in terms of your perspective, are you reactive to everything in your life from a negative point of view? Or do you have control of the way you react and the way you allow things to affect you and the way you see things? So we start with gratitude. Are you a, a naturally grateful person? Do you exist in a space of gratitude? What does gratitude even mean to you? A hundred percent. I always, I think my natural disposition to life is just happiness. Like, yes. I think there's... That's why you're here. I'm yeah. just, I'm always happy. Like, and people always just say my natural resting face yeah. is happiness. Like, I'm always smiling. You can sweet. It's fine. Uh, can I? Yes. Yeah. He said, boop, 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 no, I didn't want to no, say that word. Oh. I didn't want to use Alma Alpanya oh. Lamasa. Oh. No, no, no. Yeah, this is yeah. not that yeah. type of show, but yeah. you are more than welcome. Okay, than my natural resting beach face is <laughs> definitely <laughs> happiness. Um, there's times in the office when people will see me and they're like, this girl's just smiling all the time. I wonder what she's going through. And I'm just like, this is just who I am. Um, recently, when I had to do my driver's license photo, they're like, no smiling. And I went, mm, I know, right? <laughs> I hate that so much. I, just, I look like a criminal. Okay. <laughs> on my license every time. I was a, and I'm I just like, like a criminal with diabetes. That's how I look yeah, on mine. I'm not going to lie. I'm not gonna, I look like a criminal with one foot. <laughs> it runs in automatic, obviously. <laughs> Continue. So Continue. I'm constantly always grateful. I think also in terms of how, how luck finds me, I think, in terms of just... I'll come up with a crazy idea, yeah. like curate, and then it just, it, it's it, my, oh gosh, it just becomes bigger than me. You know, this organization that we're doing where we're using it as a vehicle to change the narrative around periods, um, it's just bigger than me. And I, I'm just grateful for that. Nicholas is going to tell you something now. It's very important. I don't even need to know what he's going to say. Are you twitching you. because... No, no, no. I'm, not, I'm not twitching. Uh, I was going to say that... It's not that it's your universe. It's because you're doing the right things. You, mm. You're moving towards the thing. Say the whole thing. You're doing the right things for the right reason. Mm. And that's okay. why it works. Because you never sat here and said money. Yes. No. Money no. comes as a byproduct of the thing you do. Exactly. But you're doing the right thing. And when I founded Curate, I always knew that, you know, this for me was a passion of doing child inner child work and healing for baby candles. Mm. When Candace had her period at the age of 10, yeah. she needed a minister of menstruation or a curate. Yeah. So what would that look like in the current landscape of South Africa? And it would be workshops, empowerment, having men go through period pain, educating boys about puberty and sexual and reproductive health, but in a safe, safer way, in an empowering way, in a fun way that's engaging and not saying, books before boys and boys. No, like we talk about these things because they actually happen, but in an yeah. empowering way that leads you to be responsible and empowered 
Because that's what young people need. And, and that answer would be spectacular if this was your podcast. Yes. But the question I'm gra- was, I'm grateful. Where, what does gratitude mean to you? I love where that you're so passionate. I make jokes. Yeah. I love that you're so passionate. Well, the thing I wish for anybody watching, watching is that you find, and it doesn't have to give you money, but you mm. find something that you're so passionate about that you will bring it into every single conversation. You'll wake up on your tiredest okay, so days to die. you're telling me to but, leave the and you'll the do wake, it for free. The wake yes. must be left outside. No, 100%. Yes. Okay. So no, we're giving no, you, you work. Go, you go on to many of those podcasts oh. and conver- interviews you where you have really the conversation. You investigated. You guys really, damn, okay. Yeah. So because no, we want to understand you, how you. you. I am genuinely grateful for the fact that I can do what I do and I love what I do. So where does the gratitude come from? Is it something that was was always there? Was it instilled by parents? Was it a, a social thing? Is it is it because you're doing for young girls what you mm. didn't have when that you point. were going through? Yeah. I'm I'm so guys, this thing called therapy, ne? Mm-hmm. Mm. Important. At some point your therapist says <clears throat> your inner child yeah. needs healing. Right. And yeah, baby Candace really was, I wouldn't even say, I don't want to say neglected or abandoned, but was left out and isolated because mm. I started my period at 10. That was too young, <sighs> way too young. I didn't have those critical conversations. Even as I went into high school, there were no critical conversations other than what happens every month with the ovary. So my relationship with my body from, a, from, from 10 to 21 was every time my period came, I hated myself. So the reason why I guess I'm grateful for what I do is because I'm doing it because for, for baby Candace, that's that, right. that's, that's, that's it. It wasn't, when I think of the primary school setting I went to, I was a very shy girl. I never yeah. spoke. I'm not, I just, whoa, like, whoa, get, get Candace on a stage to speak. <laughs> no, um, go to high school, discover drama, public speaking, debating. I found my voice, but it was also a bit suppressed because I went to a, a B school where you know, black girls were coconuts and then we were mm-hmm. being told to oh, not embrace yeah. our identity, mm-hmm. but then we're being told that we're trying to be too wide to fit in. Mm. Craziness. So I never really knew South who, Africanness. South yes. Africanness. Yeah. I never really knew who Candace was until I got into a university setting and they were like, you can speak. You can have an opinion. You can voice what you have you can to be voice. Different. And you can be different. Don't you find it crazy that you almost had to be given permission? Hmm. It's a patriarchy. To just do those it? things. Why am I, okay. No, I, uh, let's, 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 yeah. let's, let's discuss yeah. that. So, permission for Candace to be happy mm. somehow falls in the gambit of the patriarchy. Explain that. Well, explain your, your, it was your, a, it your was opinion. A condition. It. it was a thing of, I was really exposed to very hyper-masculine traits mm. in high school. Yeah. Where you were told that <clears throat> your skirt is too short, you need, it needs to be by the ankles, yeah. and you're told that your only purpose in life as a woman is to procreate, and that as women you should not speak openly, um, especially in challenging what a man has to say. Mm. S- and then at the same time, you're being told that you are a Catholic girl and your relationship with Jesus or God is a loving and caring and forgiving God, but then there's also another element of but God doesn't like the fact that you have a period because it's Eve's curse. I don't know. Who's Eve? Eve? So, so Ooh, you know, it's, it's just... A lot of, lot of, but... but intersections, but... But no, yeah. no, so how many, how many, how many young girls do you think are growing up mm. like that still, right now? Oh, a, a plenty. And, and e- e- that's why I, 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 I asked the question, because I think that as men, a lot of us are very ignorant to that type of struggle. Yeah. Um, and, and what I love most about what you do is you've got this very aggressive... Uh, execution, but mm. a very gentle way okay. of of bringing the message. I say very That's aggressive be because, my new Bumble because bio. the no, because the 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 the, the, <laughs> the pain is, but is very <laughs> aggressive. So you make your point yeah. in a very strong way. Yeah. But but you're not an aggressive human. Mm. So you 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 invite people in. You're very kind, very very nurturing, um, and and therefore uh, uh, I my the man in me wants to immediately go objection. We can't blame men, men for every of single course. thing. But the man in me is also learning to go, there are so many things that we are to blame for that we're not happy and comfortable to discuss. Mm. That's another podcast. The question for this podcast is, is young Candace, and I love that that's the person that you're striving to make proud. Mm. Is she proud? I think, I don't know if you can ever answer that, but my, my gut is saying yes. 
I think you can answer it. I, I yeah. don't know. I know that you, you, it's, it's hard to, to go if you, if you can't. But I go, if, if 10-year-old Candace, mm. uh, let's not even say 10-year-old. Let's say 14-year-old. Because now you've already had a relationship with this period. Sure. You have a relationship with this body. Mm. You understand the consequences of men and environments. Mm. Uh, would the, that Candace, knowing how alone she felt, mm. be proud of what you do now? Not uh, even what you are. What you do now. A hundred percent. Yes. Then from an acceptance point of view, so first gratitude, mm. then in terms of an acceptance point of view, we've got to often accept where we come from, what happened to us, and that's part of the healing of the, 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 the inner child mm. and the, and the mm. young Candace, is acknowledging that, yes, that all of that stuff did happen. Sure. We're not denying that stuff. No. We're, with accepting that stuff, we have to acknowledge that there were consequences, which, which would be either physical or mental uh, mm. consequences of, of what happened. Then that stuff either equips you uh, by making you stronger in today's times or slows you down right. for, for, some, for some things. So in terms of accepting you, uh, what is your relationship with acceptance, accepting who you are, where you are, what you are right now? You guys, you know the email I got last night did not say therapy session. This is not a therapy no, session. Therapy <laughs> session. <laughs> we are comedians. This is just going to make you it's feel better when you leave. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Watch how in the next couple of years there's going to be a master class by Jason Goliath about unlocking your inner child. <laughs> mm. I'm manifesting it and I'm, and I'm going to get my I, royalties. But I got you. In terms of acceptance, I think it's an everyday battle. There's moments where... Because so I have I have anxiety, yeah. uh, social anxiety, where I always be like, okay, I said something, but now I'm second guessing whether what I said made sense. Yeah. And then sometimes I question, okay, I hugged Nick too long, but maybe is it too creepy? Maybe Nick doesn't like me that much. It's it's a weird battle that I yeah. have, <clears throat> and as a result, my imp imposter syndrome gets very, very loud at times where it has me questioning my worth ah. and has me questioning what my purpose on earth is especially when you have moments of i guess rejection mm. which is ultimately redirection that i've learned the hard way being an entrepreneur yeah i love that rejection is redirection yes it is t-shirt um I, I need royalties um <laughs> but i think in terms of accepting who i am ever since you know, ever since i became <laughs> recently single i've gotten into a space where I'm just falling in love with who I am again. Mm. I've just been, what I've realized in the past relationship is that I, I did the Destiny's Child. I want to cater to you. I, I want to hand it to mm. But I did it way too much. I overcompensated. Overcatered. Over now it's a buffet. Um, Push yourself back. <laughs> yeah. The return. Two people, two people showed up. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, the return on investment was, was, yeah. And my investor confidence is low, right? But I still yeah. held on to faith. Plus thinking, we know the investor should. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, so either way, still have lo loads of love for the individual. But it was yeah. a lesson for me to realize that more than anything, I cannot get into the space of always putting other people first. And that's what I'm accepting. Like, what is this new journey of loving Candace and spending time with people that just fill her cup with joy? I never want to be in a space where whatever I do when it comes to work, whoever I spend time with are always being vampires and sucking out of me. Yes, there's some people who will do that, but I at least now know the methods in which I can always just fill my cup. So I always do a Marie Kondo and be like, if this does not spark joy, I want it out of my life. Mm. Choosing you, mm. was there an indoctrination there in terms of your past, in terms of your, the, your upbringing, in terms of the, the culture? And because and, and, that is such a big sentence. Placing Accepting boundaries? Accepting that you've got to make yourself all right. It's Accepting crazy. that you've got to take care of you, and the Yo. better you take care of you, the better you can take care of those you want to take care of. <laughs> was that a conundrum for you? It was a major conundrum because I was like, what is this? What is this thing of like, I can place boundaries and tell people that yes. I'm spending two hours not working or catering to someone because I need to cater to myself. Yes. Just a most recent interaction today. So the office that Curate is at, um, <laughs> they're doing this mindful meditation uh, every Thursday for uh, Women's Month. And I was going to the lady and I'm like, I really do want to RSVP, but I'm worried because Women's Month is my most busiest month. And I don't know if I can. And I don't want to I don't want to disappoint you guys. And she said, well, relax, Candice. By investing in thyself, it's the best investment to others. It's the best, you know. So she said, "You, there's nothing wrong with you putting an, a, a, a block in your calendar where from 10 to 11 every Thursday. You're busy. 
I'm busy. I don't have to say why I'm busy. Nope. Yeah. No one needs to know nope. what I'm doing. Nope. Just know that you can't get a hold of me. There's no, but do you know how much? No, and don't just care. just work around it. Because I've always been in a space where I always work towards making people happy, but not realizing that, yeah, it always puts me like, at a disadvantage because I'm always just like no actually I never wanted cheesecake I really did want that chocolate cake but to make everyone happy cheesecake I guess I knowing oh. knowing that I might have a nut allergy and there's an, you know things like that and so I'm standing on business and I'm accepting that this is who I am yes it comes with not always being great every day because I'm never striving to be perfect but I am at least knowing that this is who I am and embracing it for who, what it is um, there was a time in my mental health journey where I really saw my anxiety as something that's bad. Mm. But my therapist told me that the the best people she knows who are organized and mm. creative and visionary. Those are the people who feel anxiety. Are people who feel anxiety. The, the, the unorganized people don't feel anxiety and you can see it because anxious people could never live in an unorganized environment. So you can see it. At all. The, I've been saying this on stage since I read it and, it, and, and I say a lot of things just to remind myself. Mm. But the sentence has been... And the, well, the fact is that neurologically, gratitude and anxiety happen in the same part of the brain. Mm. And the brain can only feel one of the two at a time. Right. Because it's left brain, right brain. Yeah. So if you are overwhelmed with, 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 the, with anxiety, that's mm. why it's important to have your gratitude close by all the time to mm. understand what you're grateful for, why you're grateful. And gratitude is, 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 is hard enough. So like, like we say, some days it's just that I'm alive, I'm breathing, I yeah. woke up. That's where your gratitude is. Some days it's overwhelmed that all my dreams have come true. Sure. You know what I mean? But mm. on both days, it's reminding yourself during the anxiousness to seek gratitude in that moment is the one of the greatest stress relievers for anxiety mm. that I found. It, it, and it, and it, it, it works. It's hard. It's hard. It's a habit, but it, it definitely <laughs> works. Yeah. Perspective, which which I think is weirdly a thing that you do not struggle with hmm. in terms of don't be the cloud, be the silver lining. Hmm. Life is uh, 5% what happened, 95% how you react. Hmm. Where are you at regarding perspective and how the, the lens you allow yourself to experience the world through? I don't understand the world, <laughs> but I guess we're living in it. I guess we have to, I don't know, make it work. Um, In terms of perspective... Uh, explain the, that definition of perspective again because there's something powerful Nick explains said. it best Nick perspective oh no so the, the it's more just the the way you carry the energy like mm. you know when we oftentimes feel like people are doing things to us everything's happening to us <sighs> how dare yeah. you do that to me mm. how could he how could she how could they do that to me when in actual fact Everybody's just doing things sure. for themselves. We mm. then perceive those things that are being done as being done to us when in actual fact, people are just doing things. So, so use, use a nice example of like the traffic. Yeah, so the traffic example hmm. is taxi cuts you off. Yes. You have the option to get angry and say, how dare you cut me off? Mm. Yeah. He's not cutting you off. Right. The taxi driver is getting his passengers to their destination. Yes, yes. Oh, not yes. not cutting you off. Yes. But it I, feels like you've I, cut me I off. I often have that thing of like, yeah, the taxi driver did the most, but I understand that the system that they operate in is that they have to reach their daily quota to make money so that they can... You, I, yeah, that's but my, what you're doing now is you justifying for the taxi. Because right. you are now again putting yourself on the back foot and going, mm. oh, no, no, the shame, the poor taxi. But that's just a habit of mine. No, it's no, like, it's weird. It, How do I, I learn that? No, because it sounds like, like, like you're, the right place like to you're in that. the process of unlearning <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like you've already taken the steps because I was actually mm. going to ask w what it was that that inspired you to, to realize that you'd been putting yourself in the back seat while mm. trying to make everybody happy around you. Because I see it in a lot sure. of people. And I'm um, specifically a lot of women, mm. and I feel like it's it's a thing that causes so much pain within you. Mm. And as a married man, I look at my wife and I go, "You don't have to do all of these things yeah. for me. Mm. I can do these things by myself. Mm. You put yourself under pressure to do it. Then when it's not done, you put yourself under pressure because it's not done because you know it's something that yeah. I wanted to the have expectation done. doesn't lie with you. The expectation mm. lies. Yeah. So so then I yeah. want to know like what what do you what's the advice you have 
Yeah. For and I want to say I, I don't want to say for women, but mm. what's the advice you have? Because I feel like there are humans, men that are yeah. going through the same thing. Sure. I'm trying to think where I actually ga- gained that perspective of just always putting myself on a back foot. And is it is it like having that element of a strong woman mentality where you literally put everything aside and you show up for everything else and everybody else. I don't know. Like I'm I'm trying to process trace, but I, I don't think I have an answer for that specifically. Yeah, but yeah. in terms of advice, yo hey, the pots are still being done. Yeah. And <laughs> you know, it's and, a process. and it's a process. Like I honestly at some point just woke up one day and said, Enough is enough. I'm not happy with the way I'm being treated in my relationship. I'm not happy with the way people um, you know, show up for me when I like when 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 I show up for them times a yeah. hundred. Yeah. yeah. So enough is enough, and I need to learn how to just be content with myself and knowing how then to place boundaries. Mm. I think for me, the most important thing that I've been learning is placing boundaries yeah. to respectfully say, and at times sponsored by ChatGPT, yeah. saying I don't have the capacity right now to show up the way you want me to, but Sometimes I do but, or I say, I'll ch- check in with you later. You know, I, I just, I'm I, still learning that because it's not something I've had conversations with, with my parents. It's not something I've had conversations with, even with my female friends. Yeah. I, I admire people who are so open with how they want to be treated. Mm. And I'm learning from them. Um, when someone's like, I appreciate that, but, or for instance, like my best friend, I was asking her, can I, can you take a quick call? And she's like, at the moment, I don't have the capacity for a call. I'm pretty drained, but a voice note can do. Mm. I'm learning from those things. Because if anyone said, can I have a quick call? Force I'd be like, sure. Yeah. I'm Push always things ready. out of the yeah. way. Okay, I'm, I'm going to move this meeting. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do yeah. this. And then, and then so take the call. I find the clearer yeah. I become on what the ultimate objectives are, the mm. easier the small irritating decisions become. Sure. So I am obsessed with making all of the projects that I'm working on work. Mm. And that means... Please don't think that just because whatever's happening in your life, you thought you can phone me and take five minutes of my life. I, I used to feel the guilt of mm. stop my life, give you the five minutes. Mm. Now, or even but my friends know. Is it corporates though? Because I feel like corporates don't have that mindset. I, I think it's, it, it's from a... I'm sorry to make this a work uh, thing. No, but it's so no, this weirdly, I, I love, I love right? watching like these, these corporate skits online because I learned so much about people's perceptions. Yeah. And there's a girl who obviously often plays HR and herself. <laughs> and in the opening mm. of the meeting, HR says, guys, remember, no phones at your desk. We deal with finances and people's personal details. It is too dangerous. You accepted this on your contract of employment. You accepted it on your induction. Please, I don't want to see cell phones on your desk. Then at the end of the meeting, they say to, to her, hey, please stay behind. We need to talk to you. Then the first thing is, uh, we've realized that you don't respond after hours, oh. ever. And we'd like to get to the bottom of that. And then oh. she said, no, the same respect that you want me to give when I'm at work to the clients of mm-hmm. not having my phone, which means I'm not accessible to my family, I can't find out how the kids are, is the same respect I give my family when I'm home. Wow. So when I'm home, I don't want to... Uh, yeah. I'm on their time. So I'm not yeah. answering your calls. I'm not responding to your emails. I am I am home. And I thought that that was, yes, funny so because you're you, you flipping the... The, the the script but I do think that we need to be more and more invested in that way mm. and I think that investment comes from being clear on what you're trying to do accepting where you are mm. in terms of your your journey and what the priorities are now mm. and then I accept that unfortunately if I make five minutes for you I must make five minutes for everybody and I'm not going to get done what I can get done exactly so you know what all those five minutes I'll call you back exactly I'll, I'll it's just it's an odd thing that the corporate environment has done because I mean MPO working with corporates you get to experience mm, mm, the way everyone works and during. I think with Curate I can stand on business and say we are a youth led organization doing things for young people right and the way I, my team works is that we can comfortably work on a couch and work will still be putting out yes. and I don't need to be breathing down your throat no. asking for yeah. a month's worth of work done in a day and I'm struggling with that guilt element of like okay this person is wanting x y and z by now and I'm like but it's 11 I just don't understand how this corporate mindset has made us become machines and f- neglecting the fact that we do have priorities outside of work because people are attached to their corporate jobs sure they that's their identity, it's their identity. Mm. who are you i'm a manager of i'm a director of mm. i'm a ceo of and 
a thing that I could never understand when I worked in corporate was how people would give their lives, their lives to yeah. the company. Then I go, dude, you're treating me like shit because mm. I'm five minutes late. This yeah. is not your business. Yeah. Understand reprimanding me understand if it's a thing that that's an ongoing problem that's causing problems within the business yeah. but uh, you know like we it becomes almost a personal attack mm. like i have now personally attacked you in your individual capacity and i go no bro this is the business mm. the business's bills are being paid the call center's full everybody's here mm. and you know it's that that spite mentality where you have somebody that wants to show their power and what they want to... Those people generally have no power outside yeah, of the yeah. role. No, but that's exactly it. It's, it's, for me, it's somebody who's so unhappy that they need to, to make everyone around them unhappy. I agree. There's something that therapy... I, I just I don't want to be this person, but I advocate, no, you advocate that everyone needs to go to therapy. Especially Even though you living. close your eyes that's and you great, say, you close yeah, your eyes yeah. for therapy like I close my eyes and I drink sugar. You know, like, it's <laughs> good, guys. It's good. <laughs> that therapy's so good. It's though. so good. It's so, it's so good. I, therapy diabetes. I, <laughs> I have therapy diabetes type I'm too, feeling, guys. I'm feeling like quite intellectual here because I'm going to yeah. quote another book. So <laughs> oh, I'm on so my yeah, points. Point of order, point chief. Yeah, 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 make your point. Point of order. Make your therapeutic point. So points. my therapeutic point is it was through therapy that I realized. Yes. Um, We did this exercise because I love doing like, yeah. you know, cognitive behavioral exercises. Um, And she was like, introduce yourself. So I said, hi, I'm Candice, founder and director of Curate. And she's like, okay, let's say I make a tweet about you. Ah. And then Curate goes like this. You lose your PhD like this. You da, 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 da. How do you introduce yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I said. Give me a second. Damn. I said, okay. She's like, introduce yourself. Who you are, not what you do. I'm like, okay. I'm, okay, so I said, I'm Candice Chirua. I'm 28. I am a passionate, bubbly, confident girl who's really just about doing extraordinary things. In making people happy. Dab it out. Dab it out. And then she just went, good. That's how you're going to introduce yourself from now on. Don't leave me. I'm dabbing on your behalf. Dab it out. <laughs> so she was like, if, every time you introduce yourself in these business meetings, always add a human element to it. Yeah. So I say, yes, you know me as, affectionately known me as, but I also love watching X, Y, and Z. And I'm, no. I love drinking coffee. And then you find that people just put this shield down where they're like oh yeah. you're also watching yeah. married at first sight yes. south africa what do you think now we can have easier conversations and it doesn't have to be like tough because <sighs> there's no expectation of just numbers figures yeah. that are, that are business, business. yes business. there's a service that's going to be rendered here and impact i don't i don't say service is rendered i said impact rendered because we provide yeah. impact yeah. but for nice. me it's like nice. it's like i need to know who you are and i also need to understand your passion because mm. outside of the fact that your boss maybe told you we need to do something for Women's Month as a checkbox exercise, there needs to be a reason as to why you're sitting across from me. Yeah. And you are you to actually have invested in this and thing? Or are you just checking so the box? Exactly. You, you guys have touched on so many important things. Come through with the intellect. The first, yes. the first one was the, 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 uh, a lot of those people identify as their mm. job. Yeah. Then they're being called out. Then the struggle to think, oh shit, okay, what do I actually identify mm. as? So the intellect was, uh, I was forced to read this book and I listened to it on reading. How I did listened you, who to forced it audio. you? I was doing a conference, uh, on leader, a leadership conference. I was oh. emceeing a leadership conference and they said to me, look, in order to get the job, the conference is based on the teachings of this book. So you're oh, going to have wow. to engage with the book. You know when I was thinking forced, like your wife and said, read no, this no. book right now. No, no. It was <laughs> open your eyes. My, open your eyes. No, it was my debit <laughs> orders going, open your eyes. It was <laughs> my debit <laughs> orders going. But the book was called The Leader with No Title. Ooh. Right. And essentially what the book speaks to is the dangers of finding your aspiration with a title that you are given by a corporate entity or an mm. entity. So a lot of people aspire, you want to be the financial director, you want to be the MD, you want to be the GM, you want to be whatever this title is. Mm. And they say be very fearful of carving your identity around a title that can be taken away mm. just as easy as it can be given. Mm. So a lot of people mm. find themselves in that thing of, oh, I'm the CEO, but then they have an absolute collapse when they walk in and that thing is now taken away because yes. the business is going a different direction. We are, you know, mm. retrenchments are very real words mm. still in, in South Africa. Africa. And then what the book alludes to is instead of aspiring to be the CEO of an entity, you must first aspire to be the CEO of you. Damn. And 
all of that CEOness that you would use to run a business, making sure that the business's culture is right, the business's bottom line is strong, the business has sustainability, longevity, mm. the business has stock, makes profit. Apply all of that to, to you self. as a human mm. and first be the CEO of Candice before you want to be the CEO uh, of the business. Yeah. And and, and so it's exactly the same. I, I think that therapist or whoever said it to you when mm. you introduced yourself uh, is exactly right. Mm. So first, it come across as you mm. so that you don't need the titles that are given. Mm. You give yourself a title that you are all the time. Mm. And for me, that it, it changed so much about me. It's easy for me because I'm not in that nine to five space. Sure. You know what I mean? It's easy for me because my business is my brand. Yeah. Is an extension of me. Yeah. But I still think that anybody in a corporate environment should first be the CEO of self. I agree. And manage yourself to be the best that you can be. Then you can be the CEO of, of whatever. And to shift it now to Mjolo, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dating is such a struggle because people have that CEO of <laughs> self, not self, but CEO yeah. of what you do yes. yeah. than who you are. Yes. Because I swear, guys. I, I, when I'm on these dating apps now, I have to swipe like incognito mode because uh, uh. people will go be like, I know you. <laughs> you. Aren't you that girl? And I'm like, yes, but I'm just a girl. Like, mm, don't yeah. like remove the title. Yes. Like, I'm just not the, offering just the me. work that I do at my company. I'm offering who I am. All and of as a dating, <laughs> all of this, I'm just a nasty girl. Okay, anyway. <laughs> anyway, I hate TikTok. I hate TikTok. I hate TikTok. Can someone match my freak? I don't know. Anyway. Um, I think what's interesting is just how we become so materialistic. Yeah. Eesh. And it also comes through within the dating world. Like, damn, son. Let's, let's, let's not think about whether I can get you a 4 by 4 I could, but I'm just a girl. And I need so you're not one things. of those, I'm looking for a man in fine I'm not. Blue eyes. Six Maybe. foot. Doesn't miss debit orders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just, you know, no, I don't know. I honestly, I'm looking for a guy with values. No, you said it. You're looking for a guy that's going to match your freak. Yes. And, and that means he's going to match your values. Yes. So I'm going to translate it. Match your freak is not just between the sheets. Mm -hmm. You've got to match my freak in life. Yeah, I almost understood so Tanisha when she said. You've got to yeah. match Can't all be of the energy. In the streets also. So mm. you got to, you got to, are you matching my, my ambitions? Are mm. you matching my emotions? Are you matching my vulnerability? Are you matching my trust? Uh, are you are you are you are you matching? Are you matching? Are you matching my love languages? My kindness. Oh, kindness is true. Generosity, yes. sure. Yes. But how you show up, I think, is also important. Hundred percent. I'm that type of girl where you'll say I'm having a bad day, and here comes Candice with like balloons and donuts. Like mm -hmm. I hope it makes you feel better. But you can imagine now if I'm constantly doing that. And that's for not you, returned. And it's not returned. That's where resentment yeah. is born. But you see, that, that, that also comes from you bringing me balloons and chocolates every time I'm feeling bad. But I hate balloons and chocolates. No, but of, no, no, obviously no. I know. You know and, and yeah, I'm saying like, understandable, yeah. I'm, I'm, and I'm not saying it in, in your scenario specifically, yeah. but I'm saying a lot of times I think we must place, we do what we want done for us mm. to our partner because this thing's going to make me even feel better. So surely mm -hmm. it's going to make you feel better. And then I bring you my chocolates that I love and you go, ah, oh, thanks, because we're partners. You go, ah, oh, thanks, babe, really... But sure. in actual fact, do you, this is giving do you know my love language? It's one thing to right. match, but do you, do you are know? you do you understand what my love yeah, language that's is? Fair, fair. I, I, the best example I heard of that was it's like somebody knows you love burgers. Mm. Then they make you the world's best burger, okay. but give it to you immediately after Christmas lunch. Ooh. You have no space for this burger, which means it doesn't Ooh. matter how much effort, love, care, good intention went into that burger. That burger has put you in a position where you can't show the appreciation mm. because you've just charred. Mm. I, I, I mean, obviously, in my case, I'm not just someone who just gives you gifts randomly. I think I obviously tell, like, what, yeah. is, what are you open to? And obviously establishing. I only tend to give gifts to people that I genuinely care about or I'm in an intimate relationship with. Mm. But that's how you're right. I think when I think of my love languages, it's quality time, acts of service. And physical touch mm. those are my top three but what i realized is that i just know how happy gifts make people mm. feel but then yeah. my therapist did an uno card the other time which mm. is like but what if people come from households where showing affection through gifts is something that hasn't been done yeah. so now people will now withdraw or can mean negative things or can mean negative sometimes things. you you, you yeah. got you gifts because got somebody gifts. did an atrocity to you yes. so now gifts are a trigger so now it's a trigger what so did you do 
opens up your mind to a whole lot of things where you're like, oh, snap, I have to be considerate of people's context, how people were brought up, and genuinely ask. I, and I think what I've learned or what I'm still learning is ask, don't assume. Yes. And that can be applied in any different context. We could have 18 different podcasts together, us, because yeah, the yeah, subjects yeah. Are, are fire. Forever. We do have to wrap it up with the Goliath Happiness Index. Yeah. So you remember the word, it's gap. Find the gap, find your gap, and apply gap to your gap. Uh, gratitude, acceptance, perspective. Nick mm. often says perception, uh, which is very similar. Mm. Perspective, perception. The way you look um, at the world. Just, just the way about, you think the just world about the same thing. Mm. We rate them one to five. One being terrible, five being couldn't be better. Okay. Um, so, in terms of gratitude and being able to exist in a space of gratitude in your life, one to five. Where are you right now? So one is bad. One is terrible. terrible. Five is. Five couldn't be better. Ten. Ten. Yeah. Five could not be better. You went for ten. I went yeah. for ten. I'm a grass. Couldn't be better twice. So I'm a be better yes, twice. So I'm t- times two of five. Gratitude. I'm not even. I think. I think we've been through enough in terms of the, this conversation yeah. for us to buy that and believe that. Yeah. Um, and also, it has more value for me mm. because you've been through a breakup. Because you've been mm. through a bit of life. Mm. Um, and that if, if that optimism is able to stay, you know, if optimism can be a consistent through the peaks and troughs that life is throwing, what a win. Somebody said to me the other day, nah, man, just tilt your graph. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> he said, now you see that that line is straight there, consistent. Yeah, just, yeah, but if you just look at the graph like this, yeah. your line is going up all yeah. the time. That's it's true. going up all the time. I was like, I love that. That's true. Change I love the perspective. That. Change the perspective. Yeah. You guys are so smart. Acceptance. How are you one to five in terms of acceptance in your life, where you are, what you are, why you are right now? Three. Why? Because, like I said, I've been investing a lot and I've put myself in the back. Now I'm in that space of accepting who I am and working towards what I essentially where I want to be in terms of when I see myself and I'm like, damn, girl, Candace is driving a Ford Raptor. Jumping out of the Ford Raptor, doing, you know, like, and now I'm investing in working towards that. So it's not to say I'm not happy where I'm at. I'm happy where I'm at, but I'm building towards. It's perfect. Because yes. acceptance is also a thing that, that's ongoing. Yeah, it's hard. Yes. Every hard, day, hard, hard. Every day you're going to be reminded of the traumas of the past that hurt, that's, mm. that sit with you. True. And it, they're always going to open a wound mm. and make you feel like you're still that. 14, 15 year old Candace yeah. that wasn't as secure in who mm. she is mm. today. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's perfect. I love that. Do I get like a, a certificate? Perspective. You get a yeah. link a star, gold star. for this yeah. podcast. We'll give you a you link. Can, you can um, watch and, it. And, and that will mean that you would be intrinsically linked on YouTube to us forever. And yeah, Facebook also. I wanted a gold star. We I mean, we can organize. Sure. We can, we can <laughs> organize. <laughs> Uh, perception. perception, one to five. Yo, 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 yo perspective. Yo. <coughs> perspective, perception. I think mm. you guys need to have a piece. No, it's, we're not. We never. We're gonna say it like that always because yeah. okay. that's what it is. Four. Four is speaking to me. I feel mm. like four is right for you because yeah. you said you're happy all the time, mm. which means you're choosing happy all the time. Mm. Mm-hmm. You're choosing the positive. You're choosing to be the, the the yeah. the silver lining. Yeah, yeah. You 100%. know that things can always be better. Even though they are what they are. It is what it is. It is, it what, is, is what, what it is. What it we is. carry on. And if we keep moving with the positive energy, we'll keep moving. Hmm. But to bring back the G, I'm grateful that you guys invited me. I thought I wasn't a cool kid to be on this podcast. What? I listened to the podcast. You are. And I love it. And I was like, oh, my God. No, you're, you're the yeah. perfect. Like, oh, guys are cool. The perfect, the perfect guest. We admire your brand of activism. Oh, okay. I think that so many activists can learn that you can be an activist where you can... We, we know, I'm not trying to tell any activists out there to not be emotional about their cause, mm. but I think that you must not allow your emotions to silence your message mm. and allow people to hear you over your emotion. And mm. I think one of the greatest things you are doing is as men, we were able to hear you mm. and what you were trying to communicate about, about what your particular fight is and what your particular struggle is. Mm. And it was very easy to garner empathy from us. So yeah. may you may you continue being the type of warrior that you are. 
uh, thank you for choosing you, but for also choosing the world and, and making it a, a, a better place. Should and we say shout out to my mom for that? Because I feel like my mom... Definitely. You know. Shout out to Mom Chirwa. Shout out to Mom Zoe. Thank you for making an we extremely see. amazing human being. We see. And sending you. her out into the and world. And well done. Your strong genetics. A period at 10 years old. Ah, that's genetics. Last yeah. number. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love 